Good afternoon. Thank you, everybody, for making it this far, Warrior Camp uh, Atlanta. Um, and also, I, uh, I did this talk at Raleigh, uh, not the exact same one, but a similar one, demoing roots. And everybody's eyes glazed over. So what I did was made this a little bit less technical, a little more friendly. They also put me in the designer's room, which I'm very happy to be here. Um, so what we're going to do is glaze over some topics. Um, because of time, because of questions, because of some stuff I want to show you. And then after that, I'm going to be available for the entire rest of the time in the happiness bar, just answering questions if you have any. Or um, if we had internet, you'd be able to get this set up. But because the internet's not really reliable, um, and we, we recommend some package in installations, we're going to not maybe do that uh, over there. So cool. All right, so I'm Julian. Um, I'm a web developer from Asheville, North Carolina. Um, I help run the WordCamp Asheville, which you totally come to. It'll be sometime this summer. You don't have a date yet, right? We aren't allowed to tell you the date yet because <laughs> WordCamp Central is still getting back to us. But it will be sometime in the summer, and it's going to be really great. We had a really good year last year, and we're growing to some more attendees and a really awesome new venue, uh, hopefully. So... You can get me on Twitter on, at Julian Melissus. Uh, I don't blog often, but I'm on there. And I have a, a boutique agency in Asheville um, with an awesome designer and friend. Uh, and we do pretty cool, unique websites. So on top of that, uh, I like to mention what I'm using during a presentation or, or tools that I like to use because I always see demos and don't understand that cool tool. Um, other than everything on here. You guys also might see me doing a lot of this. This is called Alfred. It does everything I need. So just wanted to mention, it's pretty awesome. Um, things I like to use. I, uh, PHP Storm is really awesome, but I'm a ADD typer, and Sublime Text is really quick. So I use Sublime Text. I'm also not 100% always in the WordPress world, and um, I write a lot of JavaScript. I really enjoy Sublime Text speed and simplicity. So I use that as my text editor. Um, Git for version control is really easy, um, and I recommend trying it out using Source Tree. You can uh, take a folder from your desktop, dump it into the icon on Source Tree, and you'll have a Git repository initiated for you that quick. So even just using that to keep control of your code, maybe if you're coding a custom theme or whatever, uh, is really helpful. Uh, I use Bootstrap. I was an early adopter, and I'm a big fan. Um, it's not the end-all, be-all, but it is, it's a good one to start with. Uh, I used to love only less, but less and SAS both have a dear place in my heart. And uh, as long as I'm using a CSS preprocessor that isn't stylus, I'm OK. And there's also Vagrant for my local development box. Um, I personally use um, a VVV box to do a lot of my development. That's varying vagrant, vagrants. Uh, if you look up VVV, you can find it. Um, I'll also talk a little bit about uh, another vagrant box that Roots offers. So you're actually here to learn a little bit about Roots and the new theme Sage. So um, Roots originally actually turned four years ago, turned four years old yesterday. So um, uh, Ben, yeah, it's actually really exciting. Uh, I didn't realize that it was going to be this weekend, but um, this guy named Ben Word um, from, he worked at an agency in Texas, and they pumped out websites like eight a day sometimes, just crazy, like fast turnaround, little customization, started from scratch, and he ended up making this little theme that he always started with called Ben's Blueprint. Well, eventually he ended up putting it on GitHub, called it Roots. It got a pretty big following. Um, uh, I've been using it since we introduced Bootstrap. But once we added Bootstrap, and Bootstrap was like this big craze, um, it just blew up. Like we had all these GitHub swatchers, and everybody's using it, and um, and it became something a little bit bigger than what he had originally uh, intended. So our our thing is uh, projects that help you build better WordPress sites, um, and I like this. My my own definition is a group of awesome people who want to bring uh, modern development practices into WordPress. Uh, WordPress is, is historically really good at our backwards compatibility. We're really good at that one-click update. We're really good at uh, making sure code that was written you know, 
18 years, not 18 years ago, but 14 years ago in core or 10 years ago in core still, still functions. But there's all this stuff going around, uh, going on around us in the WordPress world. So some of the Roots team members are actually uh, not, not primarily WordPress developers. They're people from other parts of the uh, technology sector and uh, that just want to help contribute back to uh, kind of bring WordPress somewhat up to speed. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So there's two projects that we maintain that are these big projects, and then there's a couple small repositories on GitHub that we also keep updated. Um, and if you're wondering, if anybody's wondering what a repository on GitHub is, it's just a place that holds code. So you can download a zip of that or use Git to download it as well. Um, we have Sage, which used to be called Roots. It's a starter theme. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Helps you build websites faster, better with um, some modern development tools. And Bedrock, which is a Vagrant Box, uh, Ansible playbook. It, you don't have to know what any of that means. And uh, it is a really awesome hosting stack for WordPress. Um, but it is a hosting stack that you keep maintained yourself or use that as your development environment. Um, it uh, offers some really cool stuff like HHVM, which is um, a PHP processor that Facebook made um, that is wicked fast. Oh, we use Nginx on that. Anyways, it's pretty cool. You can check it out. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about today. So before, um, and we're going to talk about Sage, but before I really get into Sage, I'd like to get an idea on who's in the room. Um, has anybody, uh, raise your hand if you're a designer primarily. You would identify yourself as a designer, okay? Raise your hand if you identify yourself as a developer. You can be both. All right, cool. Um, raise your hand if you've ever used, or if you've ever gotten a theme from ThemeForest, didn't like what it did, and hacked it up to do what you wanted it to do. All right, that's a lot. Okay, less people than I would thought. Um, what about people who have ever used underscores before, the starter theme? All right, cool. So for those who didn't raise your hand, I recommend checking out underscores absolutely. It's the WordPress way to do things. It's uh, what WordPress VIP uses, um, where they start most of their themes. A lot of time you have a designer or you have a project and the client, and the designer gives you, uh, and this is traditionally what I did, Designer just hands me a, a Photoshop document, or they hand me an Illustrator document and say, OK, go make this into a WordPress site. So in order to do that, in order to get that default look and feel, uh, especially for a custom job, you really should start with a starter theme. And Underscore is, in a, is an outstanding uh, uh, alternative to Roots, especially if you'd like to learn the, the WordPress stuff only first. And then you can bump up to using Sage um, when, when you're, you've got all that and you're, you're totally good on that. Um, but this will still be helpful, and, I, and, and it may be something that you want to pick up right away, and that's totally OK, too. Uh, I actually think that the new rewrite of Sage made it a little bit easier for people to pick up. So, so what is Sage exactly? It's a starter theme that you just dump into your themes repository. Um, but I think it saves a lot of time. Uh, you can hit the ground running. It is also very delete key friendly. So it means if you don't understand one piece of the code, or you don't like one piece of the code, or you don't need one piece of the code, you can delete it, let it do its thing, and, and it's usually pretty good. Um, there will be some exceptions, as with anything. So when, when do you use Sage? Uh, maybe when you're starting a brand new custom theme. That's what I mentioned with the Photoshop document or Illustrator document. Um, if you need to build uh, a quick responsive site or web application on WordPress, um, that's happening a lot more and more where people are building WordPress sites or becoming these software as a service. Or maybe it does something crazy like I built a uh, wine, wine distributors database on WordPress. So they use Excel to upload all of their wines, but it does like a live search of where the wines are from and there's over 16,000 wines in their database, and, and WordPress actually handles all of that data really well. Um, presentation wasn't much of an issue for them, so I just installed Roots. At the time, it was Roots. Popped it up, and it worked. So you can get, you can get something started, maybe prototype an idea. Um, 
Or you just want to sharpen your skills with a real world example. You might hear about these things like Grunt or Gulp or a CSS preprocessor like Less or, or SAS. Uh, or maybe you've heard about PHP moving to namespaces or you want to try to learn about uh, object oriented programming or whatever. We, we do bring concepts from other parts of the, the modern development world. So if you'd like to learn some about that hot new trendy item um, and how it might be helpful in your WordPress workflow, we update very quickly. Um, and, and we always use what, what we think is the best choice for the job and also where the industry is moving. Um, that example is best with Grunt and the rewrite. Uh, we just, we, we, we had Grunt for a year or so. That helps us, it's just a command line tool um, that helps you pre-process your, pre your CSS. So turn your uh, less or SAS into CSS. And then Gulp was this like hot new kid on the block. Everybody wanted to use it, super wicked fast. And we were like, all right, guess we have to rewrite roots so that we can use Gulp. So we do that for you <laughs> so that you don't have to. Who should use Sage is another really good, good question. And maybe even more important than when to use Sage. Because um, it, it's, it's important to remember that um, it is somewhat advanced. and it does a lot of stuff for you, but if you're di coming directly from a WordPress point of view or WordPress perspective and you're used to writing these WordPress themes, um, I think sometimes people can get caught up in that it looks different or it feels different. So understanding WordPress concepts is really good before you, before you move on. Um, just specifically for theming, if we're talking about theming. So theme developers who want a, a reliable toolkit, that's that's me. That's why I got into the project. I was building these themes, and this saved me 10 to 15 hours per theme. So uh, if I can save that much time to start, I can focus on making it look good, making it work well. Um, that, that was me. Uh, maybe people getting into more advanced theme development, people who want a working but delete key friendly starter theme. I'll, I guess this maybe could be the same person. Could be You could fit into one of those. There's a really good blog post um, on our site. There's, uh, it's called Roots Should Not Be Your First WordPress Theme. And even if you want to go in there and try it after today, I, which I definitely recommend, it's got some really good points as to maybe where you can start, but also some reasons why, uh, reasons why you might not want to use it right out of the gate. There are some disclaimers and downsides, as with any piece of software, really. Uh, learning curve. And like I said, I think we've made this a little easier. But there is definitely somewhat of a learning curve to it. And it looks a little bit different than a normal WordPress theme. Um, it, uh, just so you guys know, it's not like uh, quite like a framework, as, as people would call like Genesis or, or a thesis or something like that. It doesn't rewrite like the loop for you. There's no tags like that specifically. We have a couple things that we do. Um, so it really is just a starter theme. It's not trying to reinvent all of WordPress, just maybe some of the front end tools that you use. Um, the theme wrapper, which we'll get into, uh, has a potential to break a couple plugins or frameworks, um, like, Gen like Genesis. You probably wouldn't use Genesis with, with Roots. Um, I, actually, I think there's people that do, but they, have, they probably have their own changes that they make to every project before they start. Um, and uh, WooCommerce is a great example. Uh, WooCommerce calls get, hooder, get, get footer, get header, and then we also call get footer get header in a base PHP, which we'll go into. So when you install WordPress, there's two headers and there's two footers. And that we have blog, you have, we have blog posts. There's tons of Stack Overflow questions, people asking about theme compatibility stuff. We have our own forum. If you do a Google search, very quickly you will find that answer. And if you have not found that answer and you're noticing a plugin is broken. Um, we are just post on our forum, and one of us will help you. It's like five minute response time because none of us have lives. Um, <laughs> so, so, um, and it very, it very well may be me <laughs> getting back to you. Um, so, so it is opinionated. Um, one of the guys on our team is a Ruby developer, almost full time. Another one of the guys who just wrote uh, Gulp, the Gulp rewrite, is a JavaScript developer, ninety five percent of the time. Um, we are opinionated in the way that we think the, the uh, modern development environment should be. 
and maybe where WordPress could be moving. Um, and because we're not directly tied to WordPress, like I think underscores is very tied to, to WordPress because VIP people use it and it's uh, accepted as a good starter theme for the, the uh, theme repository. Um, because we're not tied to those things, we can make some changes um, before they can just because of all the backwards compatibility and stuff. Uh, we develop, the development moves really fast. So as in, uh, we work on this all the time. Uh, about every year we do a complete, not a complete rewrite. So some of the concepts are the same, but people have left Roots literally because they had to learn something new. For me, that was good because I got to learn about Grunt before, you know, I, I probably wouldn't have done it, I would have just kept using CodeKit or whatever. Um, I, I got into Grunt because Roots forced me to use Grunt. And then I got into Gulp because Roots forced me to use Gulp. So it's a good thing, bad thing. Uh, finally, and I talked to Tom McFarlane about this after his talk, uh, code, coding standards, and it's all good. But we're not coded to the exact WordPress coding standards. Codes, co uh, WordPress uses um, a tab. You could certainly format anything to be WordPress coding standards. But we, we don't use um, the tabs, the four space tabs. Um, some of the functions look a little bit different. Um, we follow something called PSR2 coding standards, which is most large PHP frameworks governing coding standards. Um, and that said, this is completely delete free camp friendly. So if it delete key friendly. So if you really want, you could absolutely make it follow WordPress coding standards. Hey, Julia, before yeah. Anyone, uh, one question or maybe something worth mentioning. Yeah. Theme is very different in regards to child themes mm -hmm. as what most people are doing. Super good. Yeah. Can you just maybe talk on that for a, a second? Yeah, so when you're coding a custom theme um, and you're starting from scratch, I'm assuming you most of us maybe have used child themes or are told that we should use child themes to edit a theme. Uh, roots technically can be set up to be a parent theme, but just like underscore says on the first page, um, it's a starter theme. So you don't just take underscores and then download another underscores and make that into an underscores child theme. You have to have styles up here in your main underscores. So normally it's like a main theme. WordPress doesn't historically work right out of the box as a parent theme that then can be made into child themes. A lot of that is what we do with the PHP changes. Um, our functions PHP file is actually just a file that recursively calls other PHP files. So that can sometimes make breaking changes. And um, it's really for like the work that I was doing at the time and the work that I still do, which is a designer hands me a Photoshop document the client wants a theme that's going to stay maintained. And um, I get to kind of do whatever I want because I've got this awesome Photoshop document and this blank canvas of a WordPress site. So that's really the use case where I see it being most helpful. Um, but we have lots of, like, some people say, OK, well, you know, maybe that might be really hard for, like, government people to keep up with or whatever. Well, the, the, you know, like, or maybe like an enterprise, because everybody's got to learn it. Data.gov uses Roots. So there's a lot of really big agencies. There's a lot of people using Roots because it, it saves them a ton of time. Is that helpful enough? Well, it, yeah, I guess what I was looking <laughs> for was, but don't use it as a child theme. Yeah. Is that the guiding principle? The guiding principle in general is don't use it as a child theme. You can technically do it. So like UNC Chapel Hill just built a new theme based off of Roots that they're distributing to their multi-site, and he says it works. And, uh, and so. I confirm that you can use it, you can use Sage as a parent, but, but if you do, yeah. don't ever update it, because as you fit, mentioned, that the development moves so fast that that's uh, yes. probably going to destroy what the, the development moves very fast, and so it's not the kind of thing where you, you're in your plugin, you're in your WordPress dashboard, and it's like, updates. You'll never get, you'll never see roots updates in there. You have to manually make those changes yourself if you want to do that. You can, you, can, you can make that easier with some Git tools. But it's really like a one-off custom build. It's perfect for that. Um, and like I said, that's what I, was, that's what I was doing a ton of. And that's what Ben was doing a ton of. So let's talk about what it does, not just what it is. Um, 
It's a, got an advanced, so these are some features. It's got an advanced build workflow uh, with Gulp, Bower for package man management, uh, Asset Builder, which one of our team built specifically for this, and um, now is uh, fairly prop popular in GitHub. People are using it for some more advanced front end workflows. Um, that minifies scripts, it um, pre processes CSS. Um, and it also minifies your images for you. So it does PNG and JPEG compression um, as, you're, as you're typing, as you're going. Um, it automatically updates that for you. We have a theme wrapper. Um, whoever's ever built a custom theme or has ever made a page template. So maybe you have like a custom home page or custom contact page. Well, using WordPress template hierarchy, you go page dash home, uh, or sorry, template dash home, right, uh, PHP or something like that. Um, the theme wrapper uh, has this base file that lets you actually not have to call uh, get header, get footer, and a couple common site elements every time. So in fact, we really just have this wrapper, and then your content is separated out a little bit more. So you only write that code once. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's basically to keep yourself dry, which is don't repeat yourself. That's a good coding standard or good coding practice across the board. Uh, we also use HTML5 boilerplate code. So that's kind of what's the recommended way to just start a web page that works in lots of different browsers. Um, we use micro formats. Um, so for SEO reasons or for uh, accessibility reasons, uh, like screen readers and stuff, all that's already built in. Um, and the micro formats are especially helpful if you have a blog. Um, they're basically little tags that tell Google uh, what what that blog, what is a post, and how often is it updated, and those kind of things. It's all built into the markup. Uh, currently, Bootstrap is included, as well as we have over 30 community translations, and it's really internationalization friendly. So uh, we have a lot of uh, people using this with WPML. Um, oh. Most of our strings that are most of the strings that are like come with roots, like prompts, like maybe a 404 page or uh, a blog header, uh, all of those things are translatable. And um, we love pull requests from other languages. But we have like uh, German and Japanese. We have two versions of Chinese. We have, um, I think, a Hindi translation now. So there's a lot of awesome developers contributing back. Um, and that is in a separate repository now. It used to be part of the same one. Prerequisites. This is the fun stuff that you have to make sure your computer has so that either you can develop or your server has so that it'll run. First thing to note here is you must have a version of PHP equal to or greater than 5.4. Does anybody know the WordPress minimum PHP requirement? Anybody? It's less than 5.4. It's less than 5.4. It's 5.2.3 as far as I remember. And PHP has changed. That version of PHP is like over six years old. So um, WordPress, like we said, is awesome at continuing to maintain backwards compatibility. I will warn you, not all hosts are on 5.4 now. And you will get like a white screen of death when you upload your theme and try to activate it because, because it doesn't work. Uh, you can make PHP, uh, you can make roots. 5.4 compatible, but it would take you so much time that you should probably just go find a host that cares about their version of PHP. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, <laughs> Node and NPM needs to be installed globally. Uh, and Node, we're just using Node for a couple technologies like Gulp. Uh, Asset Builder runs off of Node. It's basically JavaScript in your command line. And it's really fast. It's really helpful. Um, on top of that, the NPM is Node's package manager. It's, and we'll talk about package managers in a sec. Um, but package managers just get dependencies or any project or any uh, server environment. So every Linux server has a package manager. Maybe it's called apt-get or there's like yum. And what you can do is you can install Apache or you can install Nginx to run your web server or you can install FTP, right? All those things are installable. Well, for our, our projects, we need Gulp and Bower. And those things are both powered by JavaScript 
as well as fetchable with NPM. So we use NPM to grab the tools we need to build the, the project. And again, if this is really confusing, I can show you after the talk. Um, I didn't know how many people were going to uh, really grasp that, but it's really cool. And really, just trust me, you just install Node, and, and it's great. We have really good instructions, too. Um, Gulp is that thing that I was talking about that does all this cool stuff, like uh, minifies your images for you. Um, Grunt was the previous cool thing. And I, like, I still like the name Grunt, because it's exactly what it does. It does grunt work. So every time you, need, you hit save and you want your SAS file to become CSS, you have to run a very annoying task to say, OK, well, I'm going to go change this over here. Grunt does the same thing. Grunt does all of that for us. Grunt does uh, watches for us to just hit save. So Gulp is like Grunt. It's just faster um, and a little bit leaner in, at times. Bower is another package manager. But instead of being a package manager for things Node needs, Bower is a package manager for front end libraries, front end projects. So as a really good example, you need jQuery on your site. OK, wait, WordPress gives you jQuery. You need a slider thing on your site. Uh, or, or if anybody's seen those pop-up libraries, like where you get a pop-up for modal, um, flex, what is that called? Um, Magnific pop-up, that's it. That's the one I like to use. If I want to use Magnific pop-up in my custom project, I can Bower install Magnific. What it's going to do is it's going to write to my Bower file. It's going to say, OK, Julian wants, uh, he wants Magnific, and he wants it in this folder, and he wants this version. And what's really cool is that you can upgrade very easily. Instead of dragging and dropping that like as a, as a zip into there, say they upgrade Magnific. Well, with Bower, I can say Bower update. It'll actually update that package for me and um, pull in the latest version. On top of that, instead of your other developers having to manage that or uh, also pull down those same things, all they have to do is run Bower install, and it already gets everything that they need for the project. So these are all free open source tools. And you can share this. You can share a very small repository with the code that's only needed for your theme uh, with other developers. And they can run some really simple commands to get it working on their machine, just like your environment. I'm not actually going to install Sage, but it's really easy. Um, these, uh, this is just for me to tell you that it's pretty easy. These steps are available on our uh, installation. One thing we should remember is the dev URL. And the, we have a manifest file. Um, needs to be changed so that you can get browser sync working, which is what I'm going to show you. It might be the only thing you're really excited about for this whole talk. Um, so before, before we get into the wrapper, let's just look at what I have right now. This, this is a basic, basic WordPress site with roots installed. Nothing has been changed. This is what it looks like when you install your theme and get everything working. You'll notice we have Bootstrap. And what I'm going to do really quick is go into the WP admin. And um, oh, that's definitely wrong. Let's see if this works. This one might work. Sweet. So if I want to make a page, I can call this. Is it making me log in? Oh, no, that's not right. This one. I have an example page, like this sample page. It's got some text in it. It's got, a te uh, it's got a link. You'll notice this link is green, which I actually think is a cool thing to point out. Roots pipes the uh, style sheet that it generates for your front end into the back end of WordPress as well. So when your clients are editing it, and maybe you have a site with a black background and the text is white, or the text is red, or the text is green, like you can see that. And it'll show up here, even if you're using like classes or something to identify that. So Root's default color is green, like the logo. And that's, so that's our default anchor color right there that actually Bootstrap gives us. You'll also notice, I mean, uh, you can't see it because it's kind of washed out, but this is using the Bootstrap styles like for uh, the block quotes and 
things like that. So here's a page, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this into the menu, just so you guys can see. <clears throat> and it was a sub item. I'm going to save the menu. And let's go visit the site and see what it looks like. Oh, yeah, thanks. This guy's godsend. What am I doing? Thank you. It's really hard looking up there. So we've got a couple menu items, right? Well, everybody knows Bootstrap's got that super cool collapsible navigation. And it's already written in there for you. So you do have your mobile navigation, just like Bootstrap would normally do. And I actually have a blog post on my site that makes the na uh, that if you just copy and paste the code, it makes the little navigation items turn into an X and then animate back when it's not open. So definitely recommend checking that out if you want some some swank factor on your nav menu. So 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 you're you'll notice that it's already kind of usable. The site the site could technically be published like this. In fact, I'm pretty sure Russell's site <laughs> literally is just a, a roots install just uploaded to the server. And it it's perfectly functional like this. Everything right here works. And you'll notice we have um, a sidebar and with some default widgets. And we also have our page here. Now, this is already responsive because we're using Bootstrap's classes. So it will stack down. It's just using Bootstrap's column stuff. But that's, that's pretty cool. Um, but this is cooler. I'm going to show you guys how easy it is once it's all said and done. Three. Oh, I probably shouldn't say that. This is password for this. <laughs> Give me one second and it's worth the wait. So what Browser Sync does for you is it actually syncs your development environment on all your devices. And it gives you an IP address of your computer's local address on the network so that you can visit it while you're developing. So um, I've got my computer open over here, and I'm developing for my iPad here. Or maybe I've got my phone over here. Well, if you guys look, I'm about to change the background color of the whole site to red. And um, it's going to update that for us. So if I go and open that file, here's Sage. We have a variables file where you can change things like brand primary. You can change, these are all bootstrap variables. So if I wanted to make our link color uh, blue, I could do that. Our link is going to update. Probably can't see it there yet, but I'm going to change body, background color, background color to red. And if it works, it's going to inject those styles and update them as we go. Now on top of that, it actually can save click events. It can, it can manage click events as well as manage, um, well, lots of things. It can manage click events and uh, scrolls. So let's just say we wanted the uh, min height, just so I can show you guys the scrolling thing to be maybe 30,000 pixels. It'll be like super tall. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to open up my, my local host environment here. It uh, defaults to support 3,000. So, and that should be red. So as I scroll down on my iPad, it scrolls up and down over here. I must have missed something. How is yeah. it? Is it like doing an Ajax call back to the... No, so, so if you see the localhost 3000, yeah. my normal development URL is actually roots.dev, and it's on a vagrant box. And what Browser Sync does is it creates something called a proxy. Is it Browser Sync? Yeah, this is called Browser Sync, oh, this okay, tool. Gotcha. And, it's, um, and it creates something called a proxy, and it basically masks that site, but it makes it accessible over your network. And uh, it's a little piece of JavaScript that basically watches for click, scroll, form submission events, and, uh, and 
on top of that, instead of, say, so, so my CSS changes, right? As my CSS changes, instead of loading all of those changes, it actually only injects, injects the changes. So it does a diff of what it used to look like and what it is now, and only injects those changes to keep it very quick. So you'll notice that these code changes happen in milliseconds. Um, actually, what's funny about Grunt is that Grunt measured everything in seconds. So if you use like Grunt time or something like that, it was an add-on, it would say three seconds to compile, four seconds to compile. This is all in milliseconds and actually sometimes in nanoseconds. So Gulp is extremely fast because it leverages some really cool, some really cool computer science things. Cool. It is refreshing the whole page. Oh yeah, it's refreshing the page. So if I, if I click over to the sample page, it'll change it here. And now this, it looks like the CSS has been cached. If I refresh there, it updates. So if we want, we, if we want the link color to be, or if, say we just want like the font size, basic font size to be like 50 pixels, it's gonna make that change, it's gonna inject that change, and all of our text is gonna get like way too big. So that's the first cool thing about Roots. When you really look at how much time it takes, and sometimes if you're designing responsive websites, maybe even starting mobile first, being able to have your phone right next to you, code for this actually, like keep your editor here, code for your phone first, and then start to move up iPad, desktop, other screen, it keeps everything in sync. <laughs> On top of that, I use my, my girlfriend's computer as like my test computer all the time. Um, because it's never got anything weird installed on it. It's always just like, you know, she just like goes on the internet. So I can always like double check. I can just get on, on her computer, I can type in my IP address, make it work, and then see if there's any, if it's just a local <laughs> problem or a problem there. Yes? Is that, is that a grunt plugin? Browser sync? Yes, it's available for, well it is actually available for both. And Cool, that's okay, cool, good. Um, it's available for Grunt, Gulp. It's also available just as a command line utility. So as soon as you have, um, if you use NPM for your package management, it's a package there. You can use NPM install browser sync. You can actually use browser sync on anything. It'll create a proxy. You can do it for just HTML or CSS development. Their site's really easy to get started. Has anybody here used CodeKit for development? Okay, it's, <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. So before you use Grunt or whatever, it's a it's a GUI. So it's like a graphical. It's just like a application that you install on your Mac. It does all this preprocessor stuff for you. It's really does simple. It have a cost? What? Does that have a cost? It does have a cost, and that's why we really like continuing to use open source free software. So here's the deal. I have 20 minutes technically. And if I sit around and talk to a bunch of designers about all the PHP changes, that might not be super helpful. So instead, I'm going to show you guys a couple things that makes WordPress really cool. Um, uh, sorry, not WordPress. WordPress is really cool. That makes Sage really cool. So if you see this template-custom PHP, you'll notice that this doesn't look exactly like your normal page template, maybe not from underscores. Maybe not whatever. It's it's missing a lot. It's actually missing tons of things. It's missing your get header, get footer, um, WP head. Roots um, has always used partials, and what partials are for is for challenging you to separate your code out into little bits and pieces, and then assemble those only when you need them. It keeps things drier, which again is don't repeat yourself. It also, to me, I really like it. I have this kind of like folder directory of this is where things are going to go, and this is how I'm going to do it. I don't just have one huge CSS file. Uh, in fact, most of my projects have over 20 or 30 SAS split ups files, and they all get compiled into one. So we actually do that, um, and it's kind of hard to see on my screen, but if we're looking here, this is uh, WP content. I'm going to go in themes, I'm going to go in sage. And first of all, we have a disk, disk directory, which gets generated every time you run Gulp. So you don't touch this. This gets automatically compiled from our assets directory. If you look in our assets directory, there's a fonts folder, an images folder, a scripts folder, and a styles folder. And in the styles folder, folder you'll see there's lots of different files. 
Uh, in common, there's global. In components, where you might put buttons or form elements uh, or grid or, or WP classes, like a line left, a line right. Those go in there. Also, separate ones for layouts. We have footer, header, pages, posts. So there's all of there's this whole directory structure that keeps <coughs> you really lean. Some of these files are only two lines long. Um, and it might sound like really crazy because you're like, why everything's not in the same place. But once you get used to organizing your project that way, it really makes you really performant. And you, you start coming up with your own naming conventions, you're going to know where it is anyways. And you're going to use it. Also, we all copy and paste from other projects, right? Like you've done something here, you might do it over there. Keeping things in partials is really cool. It's an easy way to say, OK, if I just want the button styles from this site that I've done to work off of, I go into buttons.less, copy it all, put it over here. It's pretty sweet. So there's that. And then we talked about this looking kind of weird, this custom template. And that's because we have this base.php file. Up here is the namespaces I was talking about. You do not have to know what that is. It's the re one of the reasons why we do require a higher version of PHP. Um, there's a really good blog post on it. Uh, you can read about if you want to know more. But if you'll notice right here, these files, these includes, we're using all these like get template part and include. Um, this actually tells us what file to get. So we can have a custom home page template. So I'm going to copy this custom template, and I'm going to put it, and I'm going to put it in home template. And I'm going to put an H1 on the top that just says, hey, we're home. I'm going to save this in the main thing, just like I would template custom. I'm going to call it template home. And I'm going to go into my WordPress admin. Oh, I got to change that font size. Yeah, right. <laughs> let's let's maybe just let's maybe just like 20 that. Just make it smaller. So I'm going to go into my backend. I'm going to select that custom template for home. And by the way, if you're running wondering why this is so fast, it's because my site has like nothing on it, and I'm running it locally. So now I have this home page template. Sample page looks the same, but we have an H1 at the top. And the reason why we have that is because base has already told us right up there that we're going to get that template path, just like WordPress asked for it. So everything is actually extended just like the WordPress template hierarchy might. If you're wondering, well, what if I want one of those huge full width sections, but only on the home page? You can totally do that. You can take base, and you can copy it into a new file. Say we just don't want this container, right? Because on Bootstrap, that container class is what puts it in the, makes it not full width. I can save this. I can do base template home. So it's just like the WordPress template hierarchy. Put it in there. And once I refresh this page, Roots knows that only with the home page template we don't want that. We want a diff we want a different base file. So I, I hope that makes sense. But what it does is it allows you to kind of again separate your concerns, put only the code you need where you need it, and it's also really really flexible. Um, if you needed to make changes to some of those plugins like WooCommerce or whatever, that's kind of some of the ways that we can get around some of those issues. Mm -hmm. It's just not using the base or not calling get template and get footer. Oh, so um, you, you still use a custom base without the wrapper. Right, yeah, so you could use that without the wrapper, exactly. So that's the wrapper. The lib folder is pretty cool. We include a place to put your analytics um, already. There's a Google Analytics ID right there. This is actually going to move into a plugin that we have called Soil. You can use Soil anywhere. Have you guys ever used, like, uh, have you guys ever had to inspect a, a menu item and you notice that, like, WordPress dumps all these classes for that menu item? We clean that up. There's only a couple. There's only a couple classes. On top of that, we use something um, from Paul Irish. He's a big JavaScript jQuery developer. And what we actually do is, based on the body page of, based on the class of the body, which we, which WordPress does. So like um, on this site, 
you'll notice if we go into the, we go in here, it's got page template as a body class. It also has a class of home. If I want to target only home, I can use this to target only that page. So on the initialization of the page, and I actually wrote the init finalize, but what it does is finalize just waits for all the other code on the other pages to run. Um, <clears throat> this might work. Okay. So it's going to recompile the CSS, and it's going to say, hey there. So if we go to a different one, uh, maybe infinitely. OK, if we go to a different one, that didn't happen. And it's because we're targeting the body class of that page right there. So it's pretty cool. You can write page-specific <laughs> JavaScript and keep things, keep things down. What is that called again? What is this? Yeah. This is called DOM-based routing. routing. And it's, there's a post right here by Paul Irish on why it's really cool. Uh, if you had like maybe thousands of lines of CSS on your home page, I, I would recommend enqueuing that separately, which actually Sage makes really easy to do. Um, but in this case, with a small line of code, that's really helpful. It's never going to happen on my about page. Maybe you have to like different sliders or something. Let's see what else we can cover. Has anybody's brains exploded? You have no idea what's going on? <laughs> OK. <laughs> so when you actually have to push to production, you use a gulp production flag. And what that does is it actually adds um, a random key at the end of your JavaScript and your CSS file. And that tells the browser, cache this. And then as soon as you make a new, and as soon as you upload new styles, the browser is going to change it <laughs> because it has a different key at the end. So if you had main.css, your browser cache might actually cache that forever. Um, but it lets you take advantage of a lot of performance caching things and stuff like that. So we can talk about Bower. We could grab a bunch of stuff. Our internet's really bad. I'm not going to do that. I showed you guys browser sync. Let's see what else are we going to look at, le at. So the first thing I want to sh well, one of the last things I want to show you guys is that it might be confusing for you right now, but we have our own dedicated discourse forum. Um, it's not Discuss, it's Discourse, it's just a forum software. It's really easy to use. Um, there are some rules and guidelines before you post, so check it out. Before you post, we've answered so many questions, and people ask questions like, how can I add jQuery UI, or uh, this plugin isn't working, or blah, blah, blah. And he's laughing, but I answer those questions all day for you really nice, really nicely, as long as you ask me nicely. So, so um, and that's why I'm on the team, actually, is because I ended up just contributing a lot to the forum. Um, and, and now it's, it's totally worth it. Getting people to get their development workflow faster so that they can do what they really enjoy, which is coding CSS and coding templates, is much more valuable to me and really exciting um, to get people doing that. You can also just ping me on there. Or uh, contributions are welcome on GitHub. We have extremely strict standards of how the codes are written, how the code is written, and how it's uploaded. It always goes through um, a set of tests, actually, that I helped write that basically make sure your code is formatted to PSR2. Um, but for you guys who are using it, end users, you know that it's been vetted and tested. We test it against uh, the latest four versions of PHP, as well as H HVM and um, stuff like that. So I want to tell you a little about the future of Sage because it's changing again, <laughs> and in a big way. Um, actually, in a way that is way cooler that nobody else has done yet in the WordPress template realm. I've been trying to get this pushed for two years. We're finally at a point where we can, we can do it. And we're going to use, um, I know this isn't a technical slide. We're going to use something called Yeoman. And what Yeoman is is another trendy buzzword tool that is, uses Node. But what it does is it allows you to create project templates and generate custom project templates based on the project. So does anybody here use SAS? You can raise your hand, maybe. Anybody use less? All right, so for the less people, you're like, all right, well, I don't want this to be SAS. The SAS people are like, why is this default to less? Yeoman actually walks you, walks you through the process to build you, uh, your, your project. It asks you questions. And it runs all of your commands for you to get yourself set up. NPM install, everything. 
Yeoman's super cool, and we're really excited that we're finally starting to be able to, to use it for this. The biggest thing for us is people want us to move off of Bootstrap. Some people like Foundation, some people think Bootstrap is too big. Um, you're going to be able to choose Bootstrap, Foundation, which has to have SaaS, but you can choose less with Bootstrap, or you can have SaaS with Bootstrap. You can have no front-end framework and just some really simple HTML files. It might look more like an underscores theme when you start. Um, you can also use less or SAS. So I made a proof of concept to show the guys uh, a month ago, and we're not actually gonna. I'm not like it's not actually gonna work because what we have to do is have a really good internet connection to download all the packages we need. But I am gonna show you. Just try it. I'm, no, I mean <laughs> it's not gonna work. Um, but I am going to show you how easy it is and how awesome it is. So can we all see that? I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. How's that? All right. So I'm going to go into my development folder, and I'm going to go into root. And you, you, know, you know, you have to go into the command line to do one of these things. It's not that, not that crazy. And I'm going to call this um, WordCamp Atlanta. And I'm going to go into that folder. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to run Yo Sage. And Yeoman, Yo is the command to just tell Yeoman to start. As I do that, it's telling me Yeoman is up to date because I suck. And then it's asking me what the name of that theme should be. So say my client is called Coke, because I'm doing Coca-Cola's new website. You put that in. It's going to ask me for the Google Analytics ID. I don't have that yet because I haven't launched the site. So I'm going to just hit Enter. It's going to let me pick the CSS preprocessor that I want to use. So I could use less or SAS. I can use a couple CSS frameworks, foundation, bootstrap, none. If I pick foundation, I mean, I'm going I'm to quit this right away because it's going to just blow everything up. It's going to actually go and try to install all of this stuff for me. And then by the time you're done, you're going to end up, and I just quit it because I don't even want to see what happens. By the time you're done, it's ready for you to just hit gulp, watch, and start writing your code with whatever you want to use. So that's the future of Sage. And I don't think the guys actually know I'm doing this, so <laughs> hopefully by the time it goes on WordCamp TV, it'll be fine, and it'll be perfect, and we'll have it written. Um, this is what I'm going to be working on, hopefully, a little bit over the next couple months. And I'm really excited for you guys to get to use it, because going from all this blah, 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 as long as your tools work, and we can make sure your tools work, you just hit Yo Sage, hit Enter a couple times, and you can start working on your WordPress theme. So that's it. That's that's Sage. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I want to go ahead. Are the projects available on the? Are they on the GitHub on the same repository as Roots, or are they separate? Are which projects? Like Sage. Yes. Yeah, so that? so Roots. The reason why we're called Roots now and not Sage is Roots became bigger than just one project. Um, so you can go to Roots repo, repo uh, just GitHub slash Roots. Right. And under that, you can find Soil, which is that plugin. You don't have to use it with Sage. You can find Sage. You can find Bedrock. Lots of those things. They're all in the same way. Yep. Okay. All, under, all owned by the Roots uh, people. All right. That's it.